Hello everyone, um, such a pleasure to see you for this uh, workshop about how to use our intuition for more powerful coaching. My name is Beatrice Zornek, um, you can call me B. Um, and to do a bit of an introduction, I am a career coach specializing in career transitions. Um, I have a, a particular interest in working with the trait of um, HSP or highly sensitive person, uh, which is a, a personality trait. Um, I'm also a qualified supervisor. Um, and in my supervision work, I, I love working with other highly sensitive coaches. Um, and I also have an interest in Jungian psychology, transactional analysis and internal family systems. Um, and you might notice if you too have an interest in some of these things, you might notice that being infused in um, the work we'll be, we'll be doing today. And before I get started, I want to, to start with a, a bit of a, a confession. <laughs> I had a bit of an inner conflict when preparing this uh, for this workshop because um, here we are talking about intuition, and there is a, a famous um, quote that's attributed to Einstein. Um, and the quote says, um, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift, and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. And there are certainly other people like Jung, for example, who do say that um, intuition happens outside of the space of the rational mind. So then my conflict when preparing this workshop was that, um, of course, you have to have a presentation when you do a workshop. Um, and I thought, how do you prepare a workshop with a presentation and appeal to people's rational minds when the topic of the session is intuition. So I think I might have given myself and maybe all of you uh, a big task of um, working on intuition while also potentially uh, for, for each one of us to connect with our own intuition um, during this workshop, uh, whatever that means uh, and whatever that looks like for you. Um, I'll just ask, I think there's a bit of background noise to mute yourself if you're unmuted, just to make sure that the quality of the um, um, recording is um, preserved. So um, I don't know how achievable this is for, for all of us uh, in the space to connect with our intuition and perhaps take something away. Um, I'd certainly like to, to hold that as an intention for today's workshop, uh, for me to be able to, to connect with that. Um, perhaps a quiet and calm space within myself. And I'd just like to invite you before we start um, to check in with yourself. What is it that you need to really arrive in this space um, to connect with that calm and present um, space um, within yourself? So it might be taking a deep breath or perhaps uh, setting the intention um, uh, that you want to take uh, whatever you're meant to take from this workshop today. Um, and when we talk about the, the topic of intuition, um, I'd love just to, to check in with you, um, perhaps if you'd like to share in the chat box. Um, there are so many of you here. I'd love to know what's bringing you here. What is the question that you'd like to hold or the, the intention that you'd like to hold for um, today's workshop? By the end of this session, what would you like to be different or what would you like, um, what question would you like to answer? That was a very compound question. So I'd love for you to, to share in the chat box. And um, one, one thing I'll, I'll um, add while you're sharing in the chat, um, I really appreciate that there are so many of you uh, on video. Um, it really helps to create a, a safe and um, um, trust-based space. Uh, if you can be on video, I'd love to see you. Um, if you prefer not to, that's, um, that's okay as well. Um, so there are some thoughts already in the chat box around 
why we sometimes do not trust our intuition. Mm. Nice confidence to trust my intuition. Um, Ross saying about all your programs start with the intuitive. So here to deepen your learning and um, hopefully we'll be able to hear your contributions as well. Uh, Ross is someone who works uh, so intensively with intuition. Um, Jerry is saying maintaining presence while using our intuition. Wow, uh, lovely, I love that. Um, how to share our intuition with clients. How do I know my intuition works? Um, how do I use my intuition without breaking any ICF rules? Um, how might we recognize intuition and apply it? Oh, I'm, I'm loving all, all these um, topics. Um, more able to access intuition. Um, um, how to better um, hear and trust my intuition. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and I'd love this. Um, I, I know I need to find a balance between speaking myself and I'd really like to uh, bring some voices into the space as well. I may not be able to, to hear from everyone. Um, when I tell you the, the structure, it's a, it's a light structure. I'm going to hold it lightly, but um, you'll see I've, I've given myself a, a big task to, to try and go through um, several topics. But um, if there are any questions that come up while I'm speaking, feel free to raise your hand. Um, and I will at times ask you to um, share your own uh, reflections. So feel free to jump in. Um, I may not be able to, to hear from everyone, um, but I'll, I'll make sure to let you know. So please use your uh, raised hand button um, if you do want to speak. Um, okay. So when we talk about intuition, the first thing that was coming up for me was what is intuition? And when we talk about this, um, I really want to challenge you not to talk about a definition of intuition. So don't go on Google and go, what is intuition? What is the psychological definition of intuition? But I really want you to invite you to connect in with what intuition feels like for you. When you are present with a client in a coaching space, how do you experience your intuition? And for you, for some of you, it may be a feeling or a sensation or a thought. Some of you might be able to bring to mind a previous experience where you had an intuition. Can you share what that felt like. And I'd love to, to hear perhaps a couple of voices um, if, you'd, if you'd like to, to raise your hand and just share what that feels like for you. Um, Ross, was there some, uh, did you want to raise your hand? Ross, did you did you want? Oh to yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, so very briefly, it's uh, it manifests in two ways for me. Sometimes you can just have this pop of insight, mm. and it comes into your mind. It just instantly, you know the answer. Mm. And other times, when you you really get present to yourself, you have this sense of knowing, but you're not you don't know how you know it. You just know, and it, it comes over slowly. When you actually tap into it, it's just there. Mm. So very no, very intangible, but it's there. Yeah. I really love what you said, and I think uh, there's a lot of inten intentionality in the words you chose, Ross, because you didn't say present with your client, although that is uh, also necessary, but presence with yourself. And when we start exploring what it means to connect with your intuition, um, that is one of the points that um, um, I, I wanted to emphasize as well. So thank you for sharing that. Um, so I'll hear from Ian and Roberto, and um, um, if anyone else would like to share it, I'd love for you to share it in the chat box. Ian? Um, I'm not sure it's something I'm noticing a great deal just yet in my coaching journey. Um, but what does come to mind is those times where um, there's attunement between myself and the client and I'm not even necessarily sure exactly how it's happened, but there's an attunement there and there's, there's new awareness uh, for the client in that mm -hmm. attunement or it can arise in that relationship. 
Yeah. I'm being a little bit abstract there, but it's not, it's not, as I say, it's not something I'm particularly tapping into in the sessions just yet. Mm. And there are many psychologists and philosophers like uh, Martin Buber, who talked about an I thou encounter. Um, and essentially it's about when you are in a space with a client, but it can be any kind of um, connection with another person, um, how there is, there is you and there is me as objects, as the person who is the coach and is meant to ask the questions and the client who is meant to have the problem and all, all these labels uh, we assign to the different roles or the different the objects that are part of the conversation. And then there is the, uh, some people call it the third or the I thou encounter, or I think the attunement like um, you were alluding to Ian, um, the space that's created between the people when we get rid of all the, the, the labels or the hat that we're wearing and we're just um, um, like Jung was saying, he says, um, know all your theories, master all the techniques, but when you touch a human soul, be just another human soul. And I feel like you um, alluded to that beautifully. Thank you, Ian. Um, and Roberta, let's hear from you as well. Yeah, is I have to to to, to tell through a, a sort of a of, of, uh, figure of mind, but basically is is for me intuition happen when uh, I connect with a person, a situation, and so on. I accumulate a lot of tangible and intangible information. Um, mm -hmm body uh, uh, expression uh, uh, um, and so on and then it's almost all pushing against a, a, a figurative mm -hmm. dam and then the dam breaks in that mm -hmm. moment I have the intuition but it's a lot of the accumulation of a lot of uh, mm -hmm. different information not only tangible information but also uh, uh, really more instinctive type of mm -hmm. information. Yeah, I love that. And there can be, there can definitely be different levels at which we experience this intuition. It can be from noticing that a certain word is being used uh, many times in a session or from noticing that there is around one topic, there seems to be some, we're not, we're going around it, but we're not quite touching what the essence of what's going on. Um, and all this is data or information. And like Roberta was saying, can add up until there's um, it spills over. And we know that um, it's, it's an intuition that can be uh, brought to the space. Um, and I'm just going to check the chat as well, um, just because I want to bring some other voices in, but we may not be able to hear from everyone. Um, clarity, peace, simplicity, union, says uh, Siobhan. Thank you, Siobhan. Um, thoughts and feelings drop in, um, gut feeling, um, getting close to something new, a kind of a sixth sense, sixth sense, um, an inner knowing with no rational explanation. And I, I'm glad that all of you um, contributed uh, because I think we can already start to see some trends, some common themes, how we might all experience intuition in the same way, but also the differences that come up. Um, and this is why um, uh, I wanted each one of you to tune into that so that you don't take away from this workshop what my intuition should look like, but to tune into what does my intuition feel like for me? I'm noticing some similarities with some uh, what other people have shared, uh, but I also experience it in a different way. Some people experience it in color. It was so interesting uh, just the other day, someone shared with me that they experienced it as a, the color yellow. And they said the color blue is like um, an external thing that's very penetrating, like the cold ice. And the color yellow is like gold, and it's like something that radiates from outside, from inside out. Um, so there can be many different ways, um, and um, hopefully you've uh, you've been able to 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 get in touch with um, some of that yourself and how that feels. 
Um, I forgot to go through the, the structure of the session. So this was the, the first part, um, looking at what intuition feels like for you. Um, what I'd like to also explore together with you is other things that can feel or look or smell or sound like intuition, but aren't intuition. Because I think that's uh, one thing that can really get in the way of us um, having the courage to express our intuition, to use our intuition in coaching, and can also be something else that isn't intuition, which may then have an impact on um, the coaching we do. So what's, that's one aspect. And then after we explore that, um, we'll also look at how to how we can tell the difference between something else that isn't intuition and intuition. Um, then we can look at how we can connect with our own intuition. And I'm sure that um, I know that several people here um, use their intuition a lot in their coaching. So I'd, I'd love to be a student as well as a facilitator for this session. Um, and then we'll look at how we can communicate intuition um, in a coaching way while staying um, client led. So you can see I've, I've given <laughs> I've given us a big um, a big list of things to uh, go through, but hopefully it will um, emerge naturally. Um, so when we when we look at um, differences or, or things that aren't intuition, I, I asked this question actually of a bunch of coaches, and I asked them. Um, what is your main question when it comes to using intuition in coaching? And uh, the most common answer was, how do I know that this is intuition and not something else? Or how do I know that this is intuition and not projection? Or in other words, how do I know that this is relevant for the client and not just my stuff? So um, I'd love to, to hear perhaps a couple of people if you want to jump in. What are some things that can look like intuition? Maybe I've alluded to a couple already, but what are some things for you that could look like intuition um, but aren't? Where do you find yourself as you think about intuition? Where do you find yourself struggle? Is this intuition or is this what else can it be for you? And feel free to, to raise a hand if you want to share. Um, prejudice. Yes, bias can be um, a judgment for sure, uh, pre-assumption. Catherine, lovely to see you. Feel free to jump in. Hi. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, that's why I wanted to talk through it because I wasn't sure how to write that. Um, mm -hmm. But sometimes it's when I, is it transference, the right word? You know, when I, or mm -hmm. projections, when I project my own stuff, um, into a coaching session. So for example, a client might be talking about something that is close to me or my situation. I mean, sometimes parenting is one of the things because that's one, one of the things that sometimes um, takes a lot of my mind. And when I kind of feel like I know what they're going through, but actually it's not intuition, it's because it's my own stuff coming into the mm -hmm. space. Um, yeah. So, and, and I think the, the place I've noticed it the most is with parenting. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's, um, so I don't know what's the right word for that if we had mm -hmm. to bundle it into a word. Yeah, if you haven't attended the, uh, one of the previous workshops was on advanced adulting and uh, run by Bronwyn. And uh, one of the big themes that came up in that workshop was around uh, parenting. Um, but I really love what you said about uh, relating to transference or um, in, in simpler words, projecting or um, attributing to our clients something that is actually related to us. And as coaches, we have the really difficult task of being human <laughs> in the space at the same time and being human from uh, how our brains are wired our brains are wired to preserve energy. So when we see a new situation that seems a bit similar to a previous situation, we are more likely to uh, respond or react to that situation in the same way that we did in the past. And then um, as coaches, that can be really challenging because this client can remind me of someone I used to 
to go to school with who wasn't very nice to me uh, but then how do I how do I make sure that my own perception of this person doesn't uh, pollute um, the coaching space yeah and we can um, I'll definitely want to explore a bit more around um, this topic of um, projection but let's just see if um, anyone has uh, something to add so Ian a really brief point I was thinking what you said just then made me think of um, how the rational mind can help us to separate out what's mm -hmm. rational and what's intuition because if we know about projection and we know about transference these mechanisms by which we interfere with our own stuff in the space we can they're stored in our rational mind we can figure it figure it out so it seems that I'm not making this point very well, but it seems that the rational mind will help us to to figure it out what is what is actually happening on some level. Sure, yeah, and I, and I think that's an important point that the um, you know we talk about the rational mind, and I do think that perhaps the uh, the emphasis, the overemphasis on the rational mind in society in general has. Uh, disconnected us a bit from our intuitive mind but that doesn't mean that we need to do the opposite right we're not trying to fix or address an imbalance by doing the opposite and um uh, you're absolutely right ian that the the rational mind plays such an important part because it can help us to uh recognize especially uh for those of us and i'm i'm sure I'm, i speak for most of us here who have a reflective practice and um, whatever that looks like, whether it's supervision or journaling or um, um, reflection, ever reflections, um, we're able to become more and more aware um, and bring that to to the front of our mind. Thank you, Ian. Um, Desi, and then Maximilian. Something uh, that came up for me is um, how I see it is what's the source and wh where this. Um, inner knowing comes from for if it comes from the rational mind and and conditioning um that's a completely different story and uh but then intuition comes from the heart and when we are connected to to that universal knowledge and and and, and we get that um sensation or or knowing and especially when we don't have that rational explanation or e even it's in conflict of everything that our mind tells us mm -hmm. and um i guess the easiest way to find out if it is intuition is later on when mm -hmm. we can see it from the distance of, t of time and we can connect the dots and it's interesting that um, you mentioned journaling as well, because I discovered just by mere chance that actually when I when I start writing, I get easily connected with with that source. And even sometimes I, I don't like to read what I write because it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah lovely. Um, yeah, and we'll definitely. Um you're already touching into some of the things we'll we'll look at later as well and i'd, I'd love to uh pull on those threads um a bit more um journaling and there there are different methods like automatic writing uh, morning pages where you can um it's really interesting to um to connect with um, intuition in that way um and then the other point you made uh desi about um we don't know whether it's intuition until perhaps uh, uh, later and this brings the point uh, that we'll explore towards the end of this session which is how we communicate um, uh, our intuition because uh, we have to uh, allow for the risk that what we're experiencing isn't intuition um, we don't always know right so how do we then communicate that in a coaching space uh, maximilian Thanks. Just to follow up from what Desi said, but also my, my lived experience very similar to Ross's, where it, this, the more mind there is in the session, I know it's not intuition, because mm. when it's really coming from that source, 
it's like an immediate download or something which I haven't even thought about. If I'm thinking about it, thinking about it, and there's more projections. So for me, it's that kind of coming from somewhere I can't quite figure out where it's coming from, but I know it. And that's my intuition. Yeah. And as coaches, our minds can really can, can really get in the way in the sense that we can be present to, oh, what's my next question? Oh, I have the perfect question. Oh, I need to go there. Ooh. <laughs> and when you do that, you're not here, you're not present, you're in the future. Or maybe you're in the past going, oh, I shouldn't have asked that question. Oh, I shouldn't have, or whatever else is going through our minds. So um, presence is, is, a, is an, an important part. And also um, trusting the process, but hopefully by the end of this session, trusting the process won't sound like such a cliche <laughs> like it does now um, in the beginning. Thank you so much for, for sharing that about the, the mind and the intuition. Um, and one point that I really wanted to um, emphasize because this word assumption, judgment, um, uh, projection has been coming up. Um, actually, before I go there, I'd, I'd love to know if, if anyone has thoughts around how we might recognize if something is a projection or an intuition. I'm actually looking at Ross. I don't know why I'm looking at you, Ross. I don't know if you have something to um share there um but how might we recognize if it's if i'm just overlaying a previous experience Russ? i mean the thing i've really got from this conversation already is i've never even thought about my what i perceive my intuitions to be mm. as being something else i never even considered the possibility um mm. that it might be projection or bias or, or something else because mm. i think my for me my intuitions are have a very strong signature of pop wow that's it I'd suddenly out of nowhere in the moment comes that bang that's it that this is what's going on now mm. I, i'm not aware i've not yet discovered an example in my my own coaching order of projections bias whatever whatever that that is a false intuition so this mm. is a really interesting space for me i'm really looking forward to hearing if anybody has mm. come up. so then let me ask you a follow-up question mm. do you believe intuition is something that can be developed or something we're born with and if we're not born with it we can't develop it i'm going to go for the. you give me two options i'm going to go for the third option because i think we've all <laughs> got it and we just need to learn to tap into it and if you look at um you know the typical personality profiles one of the axes or domains is intuition versus sensing mm -hmm. So people who look, hear, listen, taste, touch, smell versus people mm -hmm. who just use their gut. Now, I spent uh, 26 years in the military using my head and my eyes and my ears mm -hmm. and neglecting my gut. And mm -hmm. now I'm on the outside. I use my gut first every time. And then I connect with the brain and say, OK, does that stack up? Mm. I love that. I love that. And you touched on some important points like trusting our intuition and how oh, yes. um, we can spend such a long time putting that to one side or hiding it. And I know um, that's been a real breakthrough for me in my own coaching, uh, being able to trust my own um, intuition. And I think another thing that you touched on is the personality profiles. And perhaps some of you are familiar with the um, MBTI. Um, and I think in the coaching profession, um, intuitive feeling types tend to be more dominant. Um, and that's certainly true with the kind of people that I work with, highly sensitive people, they tend to be um, intuitive feelers. Um, and sometimes our intuition can be so... Um, we can become really attached to our intuition. And I think that's when the risk becomes what's actually going on when I become so attached to sharing my intuition or bringing it into the space or leading the conversation into um, um, a certain um, direction. Yeah. Well, as long as we um, share it without attachment, that's fine. Mm, yeah. Yeah, lovely. Um, Jerry? Yeah, hi, Ben. Good to, good to meet you. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that really interesting, Ross's point there, it's kind of along the lines of listening to all the other comments, kind of agree with all of them. It's kind of that, hit the word on what's intuition and what might be our experience. Um, 
playing through mm -hmm. and check in, you know, can you actually put a label on when it is intuition or is it something else? Because I think you know, one of the key skills of coach, we're kind of joining the dots and I put the point about presence. When we're thinking about this thing, joining the dots here, we still want to be present listening to what's what's going on and when's the right time to step in and saying to check with, you know, my intuition tells something, but maybe a way to check in is, am I living kind of the client's life through my stories? So is it my storyline that I'm going to then mm. project somebody? Or is it their storyline that I'm getting an intuition that something else is happening? Because I think the intuition comes from a place of when you ask, are you born with it and things like that? You're probably born with some of it, but it's, it's all your life experiences and things you've done. They all play into you know, think where we've been before and everything to me plays into I intuitively know or feel something in that space. So I think maybe in a coaching space, it's I won't have lived that intuition, but I'm just sensing something from a, some words or a behavior or a look that makes me inquire about something in an in a intuitive way um, rather than bringing my experience that may be a way or check in on it it's not bringing my story on my experiences to it it's something I haven't yeah. been seen but I've been there and seen but I'm intuitively sensing something yeah and I'd, I'd definitely love to to pick that uh pick that out more uh, when we go to um, how we actually um, can communicate our intuitions, like Ross was alluding to um, communicating without um, attachment and, and noticing when there is an attachment as well. Um, I'll hear from Melanie and then I'll, I'll share some of my own thoughts around um, recognizing these um, differences. Melanie? Hi. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about when I started noticing intuition coming into my coaching space. Um, I'm relatively new to coaching, so I've been coaching sort of about two years, but, you know, not many clients. And I just think the more that I've learned to be present with the client and really really be comfortable with that because that's taken a lot of time to learn that the more confident I've got being present with the client it's almost allowing that intuition to come into my space which when I first started coaching and learning there were so many rules and regulations and all the ethics that I was following and yes what question have I got to ask but as I just have had more experience with coaching and being comfortable in that space I'm sort of questioning myself, you know, when did I first start noticing that intuition was in that space? And mm -hmm. I think that's just come with confidence of mm -hmm. being really present and just really listening and noticing what is happening in the space between myself and my client. That it almost just, yeah, unconsciously that tuition just comes mm -hmm. to the forefront. So I guess I was just reflecting on has my intuition come from just more experience and just getting a feeling of confidence of being present with a client? So just throwing it out there. <laughs> I think your words would be very reassuring for the newer coaches in this group who might think uh, or feel or <laughs> wonder, am I going to be able to share my intuition? Um, I don't feel comfortable. I don't know that this is intuition. Um, when especially when you are learning and obviously we are in a constant process of learning uh, but when our mind is very engaged in the structure of a session when we're um, consciously competent in that stage where we're, we, we know what we're doing but we're actively okay now I need to start the session uh, now I need to start exploring I need to ask open-ended questions um, that can get in the way of accessing your intuition because the um, you need to be consciously aware of what you're doing in the space but the more you become comfortable with the questions and become more present and perhaps sometimes even be open to making mistakes or not knowing what to ask or having an uncomfortable you know 20 second or two minute silence um, then we can also, um, it will naturally um, start to um, appear and be more accessible. Um, and I wanted to share some thoughts around um, um, assumption and projection. And, and Ross was saying, you know, he, he couldn't think of any example. I can think of some examples that, for, exam uh, for example, I get in, um, in supervision. And this, this is a very simple one. Perhaps you've had 
during your training practice clients who never showed up for a session and it's useful to ask ourselves what am i making that mean what does that mean to me because very often we make that mean something about ourselves um and if then if you've had this experience and then you you're starting a client session but the client doesn't show up and they're maybe they're five minutes late it's more likely that we're going to go in our minds we're going to go to that space thinking oh they're not going to show up or they don't respect me they don't respect the coaching they don't care about their objectives and all these things and making assumptions can really get in the way of intuition because um, it puts us in a in a negative emotional state from which it's uh, more difficult to um, to switch back. Um, and when we talk about uh, projection or attributing our stuff or uh, recognizing um, someone else in the person in front of us, um, two things here. One is that projection is unconscious, so we're not aware of whether we're projecting or we have intuition but one way to uh, recognize projection is um, the emotion that comes with it and i think that's a very uh, easy way to differentiate between intuition and something else uh, because projection uh, by default comes with a very strong affect um, so we will feel angry hurt anxious upset um sad disappointed uh resentful all these things um uh, so when when we feel that something might be intuition uh but we feel all these strong emotions that can be a sign that uh, uh, we might be projecting and actually you're all here in this session but it might be uh if you're interested to explore this topic of uh, projection a bit more um the other session that's being run by nick thorpe on the topic of um shadow in coaching uh he'll be exploring a bit more around uh projection as well and, and claiming back our projections um and um yeah one one other thing to to add on the topic of projection is that projection is inner stuff projected outwardly whereas reflection is outer stuff projected inwardly so you you bring it back into yourself and you you give yourself the space to reflect on what was going on for me what meaning am i making about this situation what's making this um create a strong um a strong reaction or a strong um emotion in me um and i'd you know um who was it maybe melanie no i think it was desi who shared earlier about um how journaling helps her reflect and helps her to connect with her intuition what are some ways when perhaps we recognize that something feels off in this session with or with this client something feels off i don't know if this is my stuff or if this is about the client what are some ways in which you reflect i'd love for for you to share with the rest of us so we can we can all consider these ways to reflect on on projections in addition to journaling Feel free to, to raise your hand if you'd like to share. Um, so Atip said, uh, can be developed through meditation practice. Lovely. Uh, Catherine? Um, so usually when I feel there's a lot of like projections happening, I, um, I take it to supervision. Mm -hmm. that's my way of reflecting because I, I don't have a good reflective practice I know it I, I, I when I finish sessions I I kind of move on to the next thing I need to get away from mm -hmm. it sometimes but then what I do is before kind of meeting with my supervisor I really take that time to look back at all my sessions and pick the moments when I was feeling projections were happening yeah. and I have to talk through it not really good at journaling I love that <laughs> And if you think about, um, if you know the Johari window, um, you can, I, I don't have an image of that here, uh, but the Johari window is four quadrants about uh, what is known to us and known to others. And um, the second quadrant there is, the second or the third, one of them is um, 
what is known to others and what isn't known to me. And these are our blind spots. So this is why reflecting in the presence of an other um, can be really useful because we can't, no matter how much we try, um, we can't um, see our own blind spots. So then having a witness to help us go, oh, but I get the sense that there's something here that we haven't quite explored. Look, and I'm getting the, <laughs> the sun rays. It feels very like divine, <laughs> uh, divine intervention. Um, um, uh, an other or a witness, especially someone who is trained to look and notice these things um, can be really valuable. Um, Desi and then Elena. I love that light <laughs> coming through. <laughs> uh, well, um, yeah, I just wanted to share. Um, well, for me, feelings are uh, a big thing. And I, I've, I've learned that um, what it actually means to be a highly sensitive person and how my nervous system is wired um, um, relatively um, recently. But what really helped me was to uh, learn to um, notice um, and detach from my feelings. And I know that when I'm very affected, it takes time and it usually comes through meditation. But once I manage to detach, then that space to be uh, non-judgmental and to allow that there could be a different reality than how I see, than, than my own perception. Mm. And I, I love that you've touched on the topic of HSPN and I need to be mindful that I don't take the, the rest of the session talking about this. Um, but I think as highly sensitive people, those of us who identify as being highly sensitive people, and if you don't, I assure you that you have at least one client who is a highly sensitive person. Um, we feel a lot and we feel intensely. So then um, it becomes uh, really important for us to have space to clear our emotions, to let them um, settle because um, the intensity of the emotions that's on the surface can, um, can have a, a, an impact on our coaching as well. So then we don't know if we're connected to our intuition or if there is just a lot of feelings um, in the air. I'll hear from Elena, I hope I'm saying that correctly, um, and then we'll, we'll move to connecting with our intuition. So I'm planting the seed. Uh, Elena? Yes, just two short comments to, to what you mentioned before. And uh, I also, when I started to go to supervision, I noticed that most of the things I brought in was something feeling not right in the session. And then when we worked through them, most of the cases it was, okay, so the conclusion was it, it was, it would be beneficial just to bring it up in the session. And then I got more courage in doing that mm -hmm. and actually every time i do that there is some value for the client mm -hmm. and there are some conclusions and something and also another thing is uh, as a part of the preparation for the sessions i try to write not not always but sometimes when i when i feel that it's necessary i try to write down all my uh perceptions or beliefs about the client so I can see them okay so these are my perceptions these are my beliefs about that client so that they are not standing in the way of of the session but yeah so these are two things and I love what you said about um going to supervision and finding out that actually some of the stuff you feel something doesn't feel right is actually useful material to share with our clients because that's certainly been my experience working not just with highly sensitive coaches, with all uh, coaches I work with, that um, we can be so intuitive and we can feel a lot of um, things that don't feel right or it does feel right, but we're not sure whether to share it. Um, where was I going with this? 
but we don't have the cor the courage to share it. So um, yeah, uh, when we uh, we'll, we'll get to the communication piece um, and having the courage to share it, and that, that was uh, beautiful. Thank you, Alina. Um, so then, when we look at connecting with our intuition. Um, I'd love to be a student for this question, <laughs> uh, but I can certainly share my own thoughts. What does that look like for you? Um, you know, it's, um, uh, and I'll share something while you're thinking about the question and perhaps raising your hand. Someone said to me, intuition isn't an act of volition. It's not something you can wish to happen it's not like okay now I want to have an intuition and uh, you snap your fingers and it's true you can't will your intuition any more than you can will uh, an acorn to turn into an oak um, tree um, however I think there is like with the acorn and the oak tree it's about creating the right environment uh for for that um seed to become um a tree so you know and it doesn't need much it doesn't need half an hour of meditation before every client session <laughs> um, it doesn't need you know saging our environment before every it can be um but um I, i'm curious what is that environment for you um so for a, for a seed it might be sun and earth and uh, um, uh, water, what is that environment for us to be able to um, access our intuition? And I'm actually curious if it's the same answer for all of us or if there are differences. So please feel free to, to raise your hand. How do you, what do you do or not do to create a, a space to access your intuition, uh, Ross? Uh, there's three ways that I access it, mm -hmm. or I notice when it arises. Um, being present in the moment, fully present with a client is often mm -hmm. the right conditions for me. Also, mindful activity. In other words, just going for a walk in the countryside, losing yourself in something different. For me, carpentry, you know, walking outside. And the third way, when I do need to access it, I've got something that's really bothering me, is deep meditation with breathing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, long, long sessions listening to, you know, guided visualizations, uh, maybe for several days. And then I'll come out of one of those and then, oh, there's the answer. Yeah. Thank you, Ross. Um, um, and I, I was going to add there, uh, before I go to Jerry, uh, a friend of mine who is also a coach, uh, a relatively new coach, um, she says to me, um, Beatrice, I, I have some stuff going on. There are some repair works and there's been a flood in my house and um, there's all this stuff that's um, weighing heavily on my mind. And she says, I'm worried that this stuff is going to get in the way to me being present or being intuitive with my clients in sessions. And she said, what word of advice do you have for me? Um, and I, I said to her, um, I think it's like if you imagine an ocean, there, if there's a storm, the surface of the ocean can be um, really disturbed and there can be powerful waves and if you're standing if you're staying on the surface then the waves will you know throw you back and forth um and then there is a part of us uh which i i say is our essence um there is a part of all of us that is um unchanging and it's always there and it's always accessible you don't need to go through a very um, difficult process to be able to um, access your your essence um, and that's what came up for me Ross. thank you um jerry yeah thanks i, I think a few a few things for me I, I suppose in terms of the in the in the sessions and face to face with the client it's sort of setting groundwork in kind of the, the initial interaction and a rapport that you know intuition can happen so when you're building kind of how that how we might work together you know you'd ask permission i'm going to share things i might intuitively say some things so you sort of seek permission in, in advance of this how it mm -hmm. might work and you're comfortable doing that in the moment 
Uh, I think someone said in the chat, it's real, not overthinking it as well. You know, I'm getting a sense of this, what's happening for you. So you can do it in kind of a loose way, kind mm -hmm. of in the session um, and, and not letting those thoughts, which you're saying earlier, not, not, let, not letting those intu intuitive thoughts take over kind of the flow of the meeting as well. It's kind of getting it out in the moment rather than it taking over. If you have, a, you know, this intuition in the first five minutes, I wouldn't wait 45 minutes to share it sort of thing. I'd be mm -hmm. doing that quite quickly. Because it'd been it'd probably on my mind through how am I going to share this? How am I going to share this? And it detract from a from a session. So I think there's that overthinking mm -hmm. in the session. And I think from a reflective point of view, I run quite a lot and do quite a lot of exercise. So part of that's sort of freeing the mind of stuff. Nice. And the best part of it is thinking about sessions that are coming up or reflective mm -hmm. on that. And just looking around and taking inspiration from stuff around that helps stimulate things as well. So there are a few things I, I personally do. And sometimes the best way to reflect is to not reflect on it. Um, this is why, you know, and um, I, as someone who is passionate about Jungian psychology, sometimes our dreams can communicate so much about what's happening or even the solution to uh, a problem. Um, and I say dreams because Jerry was mentioning exercise um, and anything that enables us to, in, in essence, go out of our mind, uh, out of our, not out of our mind, but like shift outside <laughs> of the uh, the mental rational space and exercise when you go exercise you cannot think of of anything because it, it just you're present with your uh, with your body nice thank you um jerry and um i'll go in a moment to maximilian and desi and i'd love for you to uh, perhaps share in the chat box while we're hearing from them uh what are some qualities or feelings or emotions that you feel um, in in yourself um, that you feel are a requirement for us to be able to access our intuition. So how do we need to feel? Um, we we use the word presence or present. Uh, are there other words that we um, we need to um, experience in order to be able to access our intuition? So I hear from Maximilian and then Desi. And if someone else wants to um, share, please use the chat box. Yeah, I just wanted to share that in my experience, it's being open and receptive. Because you were saying the essence is always there, but we layer with so many other aspects of mind, you will not be able to actually focus and tap into your intuition if you're not open and receptive to what might be coming through. Open and receptive. Like two little words that just have um, resonate with me so much. Thank you. Bessie? Yeah, I can definitely relate to to that, and I like the the way that uh, Joe dispenses meditation on opening the, the heart and uh, like shifting from that narrow narrow uh, focus to uh, to open focus. This is just uh, magic. But um, what I actually wanted to re reiterate is that for me, it's not asking for our intuition uh, on demand it's more about getting connected with our inner uh, like true uh self and detaching from the conditioned mind mm -hmm. and uh, i i know i have a, a very conditioned really conditioned mind so it it was that journey to try to to, to learn how to um, to detach from 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 it and how to um, to find um, to to shift from um, a survival mode to creativity um, yeah creativity yeah thank you for sharing Desi and um, I'll share something that might be uh, might be a bit vulnerable for public space but you were talking about finding yourself and you know I went through a period of uh, burnout and uh, depression when I um, left corporate and it was like the the deeper and uh, deeper I was getting into that space of you know icky and darkness and not really uncomfortable um, it was like uh, becoming sometimes it felt hopeless and then it's really interesting that once I got to what felt like the bottom of it I felt like that's where I found myself 
and that's where I found my own essence. And um, the the reason I share this um, is because finding ourselves sometimes is a really difficult journey um, through um, through adversity or um, things that may feel like you know why am I experiencing this and actually um, it's um, it's working out in a in a way that's um, supporting you to to find deeper meaning or to find something um, even more valuable, um, like your like your essence. Thank you for that, Desi. Um, lovely. And I'll, I'm just going to read some words from the chat. Oh, how attached I am to it! Love it. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> uh, be, being in the moment, uh, survival versus creativity feeling uh, at peace and one with yourself, uh, connection to self, wonderful. Uh, and I love all those words. And I, I just like to, uh, I promise this is the only, I think it's the only side I'm going to show you. Um, can you see that? You can probably see more than, uh, okay. So in um, internal family systems, uh, which is a really, really interesting um, uh, therapy and coaching uh, approach, uh, we talk about different parts that might be activated for us. So like in the example we were using earlier about this uh, client who is late for a session and we're making it mean that the client isn't committed, they're not going to show up. Um, a, we might say that a part of us was activated in that moment, that part of us that feels disrespected, for example. Um, and in internal family systems, we talk about self energy. And for us to be able to connect with these parts and to have a conversation with uh, a part of us that's been uh, activated or triggered, uh, we need to access uh, self energy is what he calls it. And um, I found uh, these words or this space uh, really useful for me as well when connecting or creating the space for my own intuition to emerge. And actually, some of you have already alluded to some of these words, so I'm sure they won't come as a surprise. But um, we can all connect with this space that is compassionate and calm and curious and connected and clear. Um, and that's, pro that's the space from which, for me, when I feel these things, I know that I will also have access to intuition um, if something valuable is to emerge. Uh, perhaps you'd like to, to share in the chat box what comes up for you as you see this list, or are there any other words you might add to this list? Um, it's definitely not an uh, exhaustive list of, uh, of feelings that we might experience. And we don't need to experience all of them at the same time. Um, but I would also say that just one of them isn't enough. So we might feel compassionate, but not curious uh, or not calm. So then there might be a, worth doing a deeper exploration. But you can definitely feel you know, calm and present, but not necessarily feel playful because the topic you're exploring might be quite deep or uh, painful for the client. So you don't need to experience all of them, but I, um, um, it can be a useful um, way to think about these. Uh, it's the eight C's and the five P's of um, self-leadership, what it means to be in self um, energy so we can be connected. I'm just going to check the chat. Um, sometimes it can happen in a moment when I'm feeling lost. Oh, is there is there anything you'd like to um, add to that, Roberto? Feeling lost, so perhaps you're not um, feeling calm and is present. That, but... is, is, um, I, I was reflecting on it, on it right now, and... Uh, and uh, <clears throat> To be honest, I, I think, or at least that happened to me, I, I, I raised in an environment where intuition was not, was not mm -hmm. appreciated. And, sure. uh, because intuition is something that difficult to properly explain in a rational and, and, and clear way. And, and, uh, and I felt, uh, um, 
I, I didn't trust my intuition for, for a long time. And then uh, this is more personal, not in the moment of coaching, uh, uh, but uh, I, actually I discovered that intuition was helping me when, when I was um, in, in a state of depression, confusion, uh, mm -hmm. uh, lost. Uh, and mm -hmm. I actually started to appreciate my intuition like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then became uh, uh, powerful but mm -hmm. so um, and still today if if my radar is not telling me anything and and i feel a little at that moment i feel that uh, sometimes intuition come up mm -hmm. yeah I, I feel in a way what comes up for me roberto is this idea that even when you feel lost we still have access to our uh, to that essence, that part of us from which intuition emerges, and I think we really um, get in our own way by believing that we need to go through some very difficult process for us to be able to access our intuition. When actually, it can be accessed even through the most uh, difficult storms um, in our lives. Um, Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks for, for that. I'm, gra I'm glad you I'm glad you share that, uh, Roberta. Okay, lovely. So we have about 25 minutes left. Um, so we have space to explore how we communicate intuition uh, in the coaching space in a way that is still client led and um, you know uh, ad adhering. Am I pronouncing that correct? Adhering to um, uh, professional standards. Um, and then in the last 10 minutes, uh, we can just have a, um, an exchange, a conversation, or um, any questions that might come up. So when it comes to how do we communicate intuition with our clients? So let's say um, the example of a client who is a few minutes late and we've had a few experiences before when clients didn't show up, um, something might feel off. Something feels off that this client is late. Maybe they're late usually or occasionally. How do we communicate that to the client? And of course, I'm giving one example, but we can use... Um, this can apply to many other examples. Feel free to raise your hand. A tip says uh, we can ask for permission to share our intuition. So you touched on a really important point, which is around uh, contracting and permission, um, contracting up front with our clients. You know, if, if there is something I notice, um, would you be okay with me sharing? Or it doesn't even need to be that formal to share in advance before we start working. It can be even in the moment and just saying, there's something coming up for you. May I share that with you? So then how might we share? Uh, like in the example of the client who um, is late to the session, we have an intuition that something is off about this this person being late. How might how do we what do we actually say to the person? There isn't a right answer, by the way. There there might be multiple answers. And how would you handle that? Alex? I've not had this yet. Um, I don't have that many clients, but I guess I, I would simply say to the client, I notice they're late. Um, is everything all right? Mm -hmm. Oof, beautiful. Uh, you touched on something so important, Alex, which is there is a quote from uh, Jung, and he says, um, intuition does not say what things mean but it sniffs out the possibilities. So in this way, to Alex's point, intuition is like an uncarved block. It's like the raw material that we work with. I noticed that you were late. I noticed that you arrived at five past two. Um, that is the raw material. But then what our mind does, again, going back to other things which aren't intuition, but can be informed by intuition, our mind can go to, they were late, therefore, 
and therefore assigning meaning to the the raw material um so i really love how you shared what i've noticed what is the factual data that i can see through my senses ideally um uh, or even sometimes i might feel like whenever the client says this word there is something that feels off but rather than me making the meaning or the interpretation or the assumption about that um sharing the um, the actual word or the actual experience or uh, what we've noticed. Beautiful. Thank you, Alex. Um, Jerry, can someone else have their hand up? Yeah, thanks. I mean, it's on a similar theme, actually, actually to, to Alex. Um, but, but I'll probably just sort of maybe do it in two phases because I think that, that thing turning up late, I can, I can see they're late. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But that's kind of not using an intuition. But I might have a view of before I have a conversation why they might be turning up late. So I'll probably say, you notice you turn up late. What's, what's happening for you to turn up late? So get, get a qualification from the client. And depending on that answer, I might then, my intuition might be saying, do you mind if I share, depending on what their answer is, I might share the intuition, but the actual process of being late, I would just say that from a factual perspective, I suppose, and understand mm -hmm. why they were turning up late. And then say intuitively, I feel there might be something else going on. Do you want to share that? Or I'm, I'm thinking something like that. Maybe sort of a mm -hmm. two-pronged approach to that, depending on the answer. Mm -hmm. Or even letting our intuition, especially if I know, I know that previous clients were late to my sessions, and I have a, I have a thing about people being late. Maybe you don't have a thing about people being late. Maybe you have a thing about something else <laughs> in coaching. Mm -hmm. Clients not responding to your email, for example. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but if I know I have a thing around it then I might allow my intuition to guide my questions rather than share my intuition. So then I might say, rather than saying, I have a feeling that you are late because um, you're avoiding something. <laughs> An extreme example, not that we, you know, most of us would, wouldn't share that. Or even saying, I have an intuition that, um, you know, we could even say, uh, rather than saying uh, something else is happening, we might say, could there be anything else happening here? And again, I'm using my intuition to inform the way I communicate, but I still stay in that space of curiosity and um, um, offering it as a, as a question. Um, any other thoughts? There might be, you know, the, the example I used is a very, it's quite a basic one, but perhaps you have an example of an intuition, how you've shared it, or perhaps an intuition you currently have about the client or have had about the client and you weren't sure about how to share it. How do I share that in an ICF, <laughs> in an ICF approved way or in a, in a way that's still uh, true to professional coaching? The part for me that's been quite troublesome and I'd like some guidance here is when you get to the point with a client, you've done the first session, you're wondering, are we going to take this further? You have the question around price and so on, and they say, ah, do you know what? I want to think about it. And at that point, there's lots of intuition going on in your head based on all the information they've given you in the previous hour about it could be this, could be that, is it money, is it something else? And I know I have hang-ups around the price conversation myself anyway that I I'm working through. But at that point, I think, uh, as I mentioned, asking permission to share our intuition would be something that would feel natural to me to ask permission to go into that space and not wishing to be a, appear too pushy. So I'd be interested in others' approach to sharing their intuition, whether you, you blurt it out, whether you kind of notice this or what, what the approach would be in that situation. Yeah. Hmm. And I love that you, um, uh, I, I want to acknowledge your awareness that there might be a hang up for you as well. And, you know, when you're, when you're a coach and you have a, a business as a coach, of course, uh, you um, depend on the financial aspect. So, and many of us might have money, money mindset, money stuff going on through our minds. So then it's very difficult to separate what's uh, my stuff and what's my um, intuition and you know I, I'd love to to hear if anyone has some thoughts to share with Alex um, 
And what's coming up for me is checking in with the client. Is there anything else that might be going on? I noticed when I, I said to you the, what the investment is for this work, I noticed your eyes or your face or your tone of voice. I noticed what's going on for you. Um, and in this way, we, um, we hand it back to them rather than us taking the lead because the client may not be ready to, to do that exploration or the client might go, do you know what, Alex? You're absolutely right. There is something going on for me and it's about the money and I really, blah, whatever, right? And that opens up the conversation. Um, but they may not be ready to go there. Uh, you might say, is there anything else that might be going on for you? I noticed that your eyes did this when, when, when I asked. No, no, there isn't anything else. You need to honor that as well. Um, rather than uh, push a client. And this is where um, uh, Ross's point earlier was about attachment um, to our intuition. Um, I very often work with people in uh, supervision who will say, but I know that we need to go there for the client to be able to move forward. And I, I noticed and the, or the way that the, the coach is speaking, that there is some attachment. Sometimes we might feel that the client will not be able to move forward unless something happens. And then it's really useful to look at our attachment to that thing because attachment creates resistance. Hmm. And, you know, if anyone else wants to contribute, feel free to, um, to raise your hand. And I, I just thought about sharing how there was one point that I felt was a breakthrough for me in sharing my own intuition. And when I started coaching and actually even like 12 or 18 months in, uh, in my coaching practice, um, I often had intuition or feelings or something didn't feel right. And what I would do is I would write them down in a corner of my notepad and park them because I was like, oh, this is my stuff. I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling nervous. I'm feeling angry with the client or perhaps something they've said. I'm feeling and all these things. And I used to park them. And then when I, um, uh, it was really interesting when I started to become a, a supervisor, there is um, uh, one framework that's called the seven eyes of supervision. Uh, and I know Siobhan <laughs> knows what I'm talking about and perhaps other people who have trained as supervisors. Um, and I6 of supervision talks about uh, for you as a supervisor, as you're here with the coach in the same space, what is your process? What is going on for you as you hear this person speak? Um, and I thought that was so interesting. And I was like, but there is loads of stuff going on inside me as I sit with people, but I just park them because I, you know, that's my stuff. I don't bring it into this space. And someone else, uh, Catherine, I think you were talking about um, supervision and uh, not um, maybe Elena, actually, it was about um, supervision and um, how uh, sometimes it's useful. Um, and it's almost like I6 of supervision was gave me permission to really connect with my process and what I feel. And for example, I might say, when I hear you speak about this client, I feel sadness. And the coach might say, yeah, the client feels so sad. I haven't thought about this before. And this is, this is just an example in which it's not, uh, it's not saying, I think the client is sad, but I feel sadness. It's about me what I'm experiencing. As you speak to me about this, I feel, um, I feel like a knot in my stomach. What's going on for you? Is this my stuff? Is it related to what you're sharing? You know, and also having the ability to accept that what's going on is my stuff and may not have anything to do with you. And when I started, the other thing I did, and um, I think if there is one thing that you take from this whole session, <laughs> I would really encourage you for, for, uh, for it to be this, which is 
I had the biggest breakthrough in becoming really intuitive and allowing my intuition to be really a big part of my coaching and my supervision. When, because I was training as a supervisor, I said to myself, do you know what? I'm going to make loads of mistakes and some of them even on purpose, just to give myself the experience of making mistakes. And it was so fascinating and mind blowing that within a period of, I think, three months, both my coaching and my supervision practice transformed completely drastically because it was in giving myself permission to make mistakes, but really giving myself permission, not the kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like we tell ourselves, yeah, yeah, I know I need to be more compassionate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to um, trust myself more and uh, be more courageous. Like really giving yourself permission to make mistakes is going to hopefully be as transformative and as a, a, as a breakthrough um, that it was for me. Um, and sometimes making mistakes, especially when I work with a coach, because um, when a coach comes to supervision, there's very often this um, expectation that the supervisor is you know, more knowledgeable or is the expert. And sometimes there can be this um, child parent dynamic, um, you know, tell me what to do. Did I do something wrong? Um, so actually, I think that making the same thing, the same process can happen in coaching where a client comes to us projecting this authority and where this god or goddess put on a pedestal. And actually making mistakes can really bring us down to human level and be able to have human to human interactions. And I have noticed in my supervision, uh, at least, that I tend to make more mistakes with people who think very highly of me and how, uh, hold me in very high regard. And I think if I make a mistake, I think that's so useful because it brings me down and we can have a peer to peer conversation where I hold the role of supervisor and you hold the role of coach, but we're not like this. We're, we're equals and that really empowers the other person to both make mistakes and also feel more empowered to um, um, come up with new answers and solutions. Ian? What you were saying about making mistakes is um, I'd, I'd rather make a mistake than take really, really detailed notes and mm couple of clients have corrected me because I've missed something or I've said something that's not quite right because I think that that presence that attunement that contact is more important than writing down every detail and when I used to write down things often they were completely irrelevant anyway mm. um, so I'd rather just make the mistake and have them um, have them correct me if necessary mm. So I appreciate being reminded that I've kind of started that as a, as a process and it is really useful. Yeah, and I love what you said about writing down a question and sometimes not being useful because if you write down a question, then you're not there with what, you know, it could be that the last word in the client sentence changes the whole meaning. <laughs> we, our mind is going there, but actually the last word that the person says changes the whole thing and then if we're present with a question we're not present with the um the client and um this attunement that you speak of ian enables us to be present to the essence of what the person is sharing even if we don't necessarily uh, fully recall the right words mm. lovely so we have about 10 minutes left i'd love to open it um either if you have some thoughts to share around uh, what we were just exploring, uh, how to communicate, how to communicate intuition with the client, or to share any questions that are coming up for you. Perhaps there is something that we haven't explored. Um, we probably have time for two questions. Alex and then Ian. So one of the things I've, I've learned in my um, my studies is I need to blurt my intuition more. I live up here <laughs> in the head. And what I'm hearing here is that actually I need to have some kind of filter here beyond blurting to make sure it's not just about me. 
And it's, it's how do you strike that balance between in the moment presenting what's, what you're feeling for the client and making sure that it's going to be in service of the client. Mm. Is that simply practice or is there something else going on? Can I ask you to intuitively answer your own question? Yeah, I, I go straight up to my head to, mm. to answer that, which is why I'm struggling to answer that. Mm. If you give it a moment, does anything else emerge? I think it would be, there's a lot of suppressed intuition there and I need, I can practice extending where I am on that spectrum to find the balance. I think, I think that's probably where I would go from here. Yeah. And we definitely find our own way, um, and a very practical and tactical, um, suggestion I can offer you is to have a work with a peer perhaps there is someone else in this group who says do you know what i'd really love to work in a more intuitive way in coaching but i'm i'm not quite sure i have the right way to communicate it. i don't know if i found the right balance between uh communicating i'd love to to have someone where i can practice this um and say to the the client before we start um you know what i i want to work in a slightly different way and i might be making mistakes as well um, can I, can I have your permission to, to experiment with something I'm trying out? Um, and especially if it's a peer, you can also get feedback, um, afterwards. How did that land with you? When I said with, when I said to you, I have an intuition that there is something else going on, <laughs> uh, when you, when you, when we talk about money, um, how did that land for you? Well, you know, I would have liked for you to, I thought that was a bit direct or abrupt. And then you can, you can learn and adjust. But sometimes what one person sees as uh, confronting, another person might see as really beneficial. So it's also, uh, and I go back to giving yourself permission to make, to make mistakes and go, okay, that pushed you too far. That's absolutely fine where do we go from here how do we move forward from this moment where what i said was too confronting for you it's not necessarily that what you said was confronting but the client might have received it in that way and we need to honor both of our experiences and we don't need to change who we are or how we work or make ourselves small out of fear that the client might feel um confronted um so then it becomes a question of rather than how do I share this in a way that the client doesn't feel confronted? How do I share this in a way that the client might be confronted and feel able that I can deal with the aftermath of that? And often it's, uh, it's much easier than, um, than it feels because if we can just be humans in the space with the other person, um, uh, we'll manage to, to come back from many things. Ian? Just another um, thought about the note taking. I've noticed mm -hmm. that when when someone's note taking, um, and I'm the client, it's not just for me experientially. For me, it's it's not just breaking contact. It's it's giving out how, how I interpret or receive it a a be perfect message or a be perfect driver. And thinking of TA driver begets driver so if i'm giving myself an unconscious message to be perfect and mm -hmm. jot down every single detail maybe i'm not just breaking rapport with the client but maybe i'm giving them uh, an unconscious message to be to be perfect so I'm kind of thinking about how we might also communicate in intuitive or unconscious ways Mm -hmm. that are, are unhelpful and kind of thinking about that mm -hmm. in terms of there being a, a relational field between us, even over Zoom, that science can't account for. And we don't know what the hell it is, but it's there. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that, I wonder? Um, I feel that that's been the really unexpected benefit of giving myself permission to make mistakes with my clients noticing that 
it becomes a much more human to human interaction when I give myself permission to make mistakes. And I know now I really embrace making mistakes because I know that if I do make a mistake, I'll be able together with a person to, um, to come back from it. And I also know the reverse of that um, as a perfectionist and a be perfect driver myself. Um, I have caught myself saying to another perfectionist client, saying to them, so we have five minutes left. What is the best way for us to end the session right now? <laughs> and that can, so mindful of the language we use, how we can either enable uh, or how we can really give ourselves permission to, um, to make mistakes, which will help us be more powerful um, in the work we do, but also will enable our clients to, accept their own um, humanness, humanity. Thank you, Ian. Uh, we're coming up to the um, end of the session and I'd love for you to share what's one thing you're taking away. Um, and I'd love for you to think about something that feels tangible. <laughs> we're talking about intuition, which is intangible, but what what will be different going forward in the next session with your client? What will be different as a result of the this session? Or I can ask another question. What's one thing you want to anchor from everything that we've explored today? One thing that you want to anchor and go, I want to remember this when I work with um, clients. Feel free to raise your hand if you'd like to share in the group. Um, uh, otherwise, feel free to, to share in the chat box and I'll be here until five past. Um, so in case um, um, there, there's anything else. Uh, Roberto and then Ali. Simply, I, I, I feel I have a little bit more courage to mm -hmm. use intuition. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. Courage, beautiful, thank you. Uh, Ali and then Desi. Hi Beatrice, thanks so much for this fabulous session. I think the thing I actually said a few minutes ago brings a lot of elements of what we've talked about today together. Um, and the key takeaway for me about honouring your experiences, not changing yourself or making yourself small, um, but having a sense of being able to deal with whatever comes out of a scenario with a client. Mm -hmm. And that links back in nicely to giving ourselves permission. Um, I think as a coach, quite often we've got a lot of things going on about how we're performing or efforting or but when we can mm -hmm. step back from that and honor our experiences I think it can really make for some magic mm. step back from that and honor experiences yeah beautiful just before I go to Desi I'm mindful that some of you might need to to leave on the hour um what I'll share in the chat box if um um if uh, this workshop has resonated with you or uh, my my approach or how I've been talking about this. I have a free uh, ebook which I offer on my website, and it's uh, it's dedicated for people who for coaches who identify as highly sensitive people, um, and it's uh, called uh, Five Tools to for Highly Sensitive Coaches to Create More Powerful Results for Their Clients in Coaching. That is a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> uh, but if that resonates with you, feel free to download it. It's a, um, it's a free ebook. And also um, you can contact me through my website if you have any questions or if something resonated from this workshop and you'd like to continue the conversation. Um, Desi, what's your takeaway? Uh, thank you, Beatrice. That has been such an insightful and um, yeah, powerful workshop. And yeah, definitely my key takeaway about giving ourselves permission to make mistakes. And this is something that I'm trying to learn and more significantly trying to unlearn my, my conditioning. Mm. But something that really blew my mind when you mentioned when you linked it to that feeling of uh superiority or inferiority and, and for me i know that the feeling and inferiority is a is a big is a big trigger and it, i just wonder like how does even it look like to give ourselves permission to make mistakes because rationally I can I can rationalize it, but then it's it, it it's it goes in the subconscious as well. So it's quite 
deep. Hmm. I'm going to answer that a bit intuitively, but I do get the sense that it's something you need to find your own way because your flavor of not giving yourself permission to make mistakes will be unique to you. Um, but just in conversation, when speaking with a client, I might say, um, you know what, may I share? I'll give you an example, actually. Perfect example. One time, I was in a client session and I said to them, can I share something that's coming up for me? And they said, yes. And I said, I feel anger. And they said, what do you mean? And I said, I don't know. I just, I feel anger. Is that relevant in some way too? Um, and it was a really difficult moment to come back from because um, the client couldn't, it might have been my stuff. It might have been, you know, sometimes it's a, the client isn't um, ready to see that, or you know, it can be it can be our stuff. But I gave myself permission to make um, that mistake, and I was able to stay present, really present with the client for the next, you know, five to ten minutes while that was being um, unpacked. And that was, uh, you know, since then, I also learned about the importance of how we communicate our intuition to guide our questions rather than make, uh, you know, my, my statement might have been a bit confrontational going back to Alex's point. Um, but I gave myself the permission to make that mistake. And I knew that I, after that, I knew that I could just, I didn't know how to handle it, but I knew that I could just be human with the person in front of me. And I said, do you know what? It feels really vulnerable that I've said that. How do we come back from this? Is that helpful? Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, I'll, I'll hear briefly from Charlotte and then from Jerry, uh, and then we'll, we'll leave the room for uh, the next person. Charlotte? Hi, thank you, Beatrice. I've really enjoyed it because um, it's really reinforced for me why I've struggled so much with following models and structure and the Animas or the ICF, all those approaches. It just has blocked me the way, whole way through my training. Mm -hmm. And uh, literally about a month ago, I just went, sod it, I need to do it my way. And it was just mm -hmm. such a refreshing moment. It wasn't even, in fact, probably a little bit longer than that, but it, that's, mm -hmm. it's just drawn in the right type of clients and that reassurance that um to actually just trust and and develop that personal element so yeah, thank you that's useful. been very reaffirming and there is a space where the two meet sure. using our intuition and being authentic and working in a professional way sure okay. yeah. <laughs> and i love that you're you're exploring that thank you charlotte uh jerry yeah thanks just two quick things from me i think to say courage i think to use intuition and continue to to, to use that and, and in the moment. And I think the other word, mistake, the word mistakes be used quite a lot, I think, in the, mm -hmm. in the session. I think there's a thing for me about reframing that. Um, I'd give it a different label, like experiment or whatever label you want to give to it, because we learn most from our experimenting. And mm -hmm. I've, I've removed mistake from my vocabulary because we're moving forward. And if, if, if experimenting helps us move forward, it's, yeah. it's good. It's all good. The language we use, beautiful. It's been such a pleasure to have a really rich conversation with all of you. Um, thank you for all your beautiful contributions. Um, lovely seeing you. Hope you enjoy the rest of the day and the workshops. And uh, perhaps I'll, I'll see some of you uh, at some point soon. All the best. Goodbye. <laughs>